Okay, verse 8 on uh, chapter 5 of Mat Matthews. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now it says right here, they're going to see God. Those who are pure in heart are going to see God. This should be a, a, the Christian, the born again Christian. That should be number one in our life. That should be top priority in our life is to see God. I mean, to see God, the one who saved us. And he saved us from what? From hell. From being separated from him and burning forever and ever. Like we say, everybody's going to live forever, everybody. And it just, praise God that he opened our eyes that we know where we're going to be in heaven and not in hell fire. So it, it should be our number one goal. We can't wait to see our Father, to see our God, because of what he's done for us, the way he's blessed us. <clears throat> and the Beatitudes are, <clears throat> are actions that are going to happen when you get truly born again. Truly born again. I think the pastor touched it or somebody touched on it about once saved, always saved. It's true. We do have secure, uh, eternal security. But we do have some people out there who think if all they have to do is walk the aisle, say they accepted the Lord, and then just go on about their own business. But that's not getting born again. That's just making some motions in the church. When you're truly born again, the Beatitudes is the kind of life you're going to live. And those of us who didn't know the Beatitudes, we're learning them now. The Beatitudes, like I said earlier, they're for the disciples of God. Now I'll get on, on that more. But I want to show you, you to see God, you got to have a pure heart. When we live by the Beatitudes, we don't have any problems saying to God what Psalm says. Psalms 139, verse 23 and 24. We can say, when we're walking with the Lord... We don't have a problem saying, search me, O God, and know my heart. How many of us can say that? And I don't see no hands. But how many of us can say that? Search me, God, know my heart. I mean, do we have that pure heart yet? Right here, it's saying, know my heart. This, The psalmist is saying, know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me into the way everlasting. <clears throat> so, when we're born again, and we start living a Christian life, which is the Beatitudes, that's what we're learning. Can we? Can we? And this is a question for y'all to ask yourselves. Can I tell the Lord, Lord, search my heart, search my thoughts, look at my thoughts, can we? <clears throat> I mean, if we can, praise God, you're walking with the Lord. But there's some of us, I would imagine, we don't want the Lord to see it, even though He does. We can't hide from Him. In Job 42, 5, I have heard thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see thee. Just like Moses, they said Moses saw God face to face. Well, we know he didn't see Him face to face, but because, but because, God, because of Moses knowing God, he could see God. He had a pure heart. Moses had a pure heart. And because he had a pure heart, he could see God. He, know, he knew God's ways. Like I read uh, last Wednesday, Moses wanted to, he wanted more than just seeing God. He wanted to know God. And that's, when you know God, you can see God. Hope you all understand what I'm saying. Psalms 24, verse 3 and 4. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in the holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor swore deceitfully. Who's going to see God? Again, those with clean hands and a pure heart. So if y'all want to see the Lord, this is what we're going to have to have. This is how we're going to have to be. The clean hands, the clean hand, the clean hands. That's referring back to Ezekiel. Chapter 3, verse 18. It says, When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquities, but his blood will I require at thy hand. So if we don't warn the wicked of their wicked ways, the Lord says, Their blood is on our hands. Because not warn them. 
Now, next week, when I get on uh, Peacemakers, I was, I'm going to be a lot more on this. But I just wanted to show right here, when he said, clean hands, Acts 20:26. 20, this is Paul. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. That was Paul referring back to Ezekiel. He's I'm pure from the blood. There's no man's blood on my hands. And what Paul was saying, he said, I have witnessed to everyone that the Lord has brought my way. That's what he's saying. That's why he's, he's able to say, I'm pure from the blood of all men. There's no man out there that's dying and going to hell because I didn't witness to him. Whoever came his way. And the Lord says, as you're going, as you're going through life, we're supposed to witness. Now, I don't want to start on that because we're going to get on that next week. But having clean hands, that's what having clean hands is. Just like I showed you in Ezekiel and why Paul said it in Acts. God will show you where your heart is. We're talking about a pure heart. Hebrews 4, verses 12 through 13. 12 and 13. For the word of the God, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It is to show that we can't escape the notice of, of God. We can't hide enough from the Lord. All sincerity and unbelief and hypocr hypocrisy, the Lord can see it. And since our hearts are perfectly open before Him, our hearts are just, you know, I don't know your hearts, okay? I don't know my wife's heart. None of y'all know my heart. But our hearts are totally open to the Lord. He knows our hearts better than we know our hearts. Your thoughts and intents, they're seen by God. He knows why we, why peop, if people help because they want to be looked at as something, you know, look what I did. And He knows when you did it from the heart in secret. So if we're Christian in... When, if we're not at church or around Christians, well, there's no Christians here. I'm going to do this. Well, God's there. God's there. And what's more important, should it really matter to us if this person sees us, no matter who it is, or is it more important that, we, that God? So if we, can't hide, if we can't hide nothing from the Lord, why are we trying to hide something from a person? Do you understand what I'm saying? God is always there. And right here he's saying, hey, I, I know your heart. I know your intent. Do we act like Christians when we're around Christians, but act like lost people when we're around lost people? It happens. Happens all the time. The place where I used to work, the guys were there. We, there was a bunch of guys, like 20 guys. And there was another guy there who's proclaimed to be a Christian. And they come up to me one day and they said, you know, when you hear that guy, he acts all religious. They use the word religious. He acts all religious. He tries to act like you. But when you're gone, he's telling those dirty jokes and he's cussing and all that. And I said, well, you know, I can't say nothing about him. I don't know where his heart is, but I know me. I watch for myself. And they know I didn't cuss him. And even my boss who proclaimed to be a Christian, he proclaimed to be a Christian. And they told me about him and so one day my boss and I was having lunch together and I, I asked him, I said, uh, can I talk to you friend to friend and not boss to employee? <laughs> he said, yeah. So I told him, I said, I told him what it, the guy said out there about him cursing them, about how he treats them, and they know you proclaim to be a Christian. And his answer to me was, well, if I don't do it that way, they won't listen to me. I didn't say anything else. I just wanted to let him know that he's being watched. He is being a witness. And these guys notice it. Lost people notice it. They notice it. So our hearts, the Lord knows it. The Lord knows it. We might fool people. We might can fool you. Like me, I could be up here teaching the Word of God and go out and uh, get drunk or steal and nobody know it. Y'all don't know y'all don't know my heart. So the heart, I'm telling you how important the heart is. If your heart's not right with the Lord, don't worry about it being you know, trying to fool somebody else.
We can we can fool people, but we can't fool the Lord. So if you think, oh, I can act like I'm a Christian around Christians, and then act like my friends who are lost when I'm around them, well, the Lord sees that. We have to have a pure heart. This teaching is on having a pure heart. There's no acting in being a Christian. Verse 13. Is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight? But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Again, this is saying we can't hide from the Lord. He takes, if we are being hypocrites, he takes our disguises off of our face. He takes them off. And he sees the real person. He sees the real person. And the reason I really, really pushing this one because I get, I'm guilty of used to doing it myself. So we need to, we need to have a pure heart. Having a pure heart is knowing that God sees our heart, and it's up to us to please Him with our heart. That's where we please the Lord is with our heart. With our heart is that's how we please Him. We have to please Him with a pure heart. Psalms 51, 6. Behold, thy desires truth in the inward port, and in the hidden port of thou shake shall, <clears throat> excuse me, and in the hidden port thou shalt make me to know wisdom. So he's saying here, your desire on the inner ports. This, this is, this is where you, it all counts right here. You know, a lot of us have them here. A lot of us have them here. A lot of people have them here. But they don't have them here. And there's a big difference from here and here. When you have the Lord here and you're, living, you're trying to live a Christian life but you only have Him here, well, the only way you're going to live a Christian life is by gritting your teeth and making yourself do it. All right? That's the way people who don't have the Holy Spirit. You've got to use your own power to try to be right with God. We can't do it. We can't do it. The only way we can do these commandments of the Lord is by the power of the Holy Spirit, which we get when we get born again. So we need, we need the Holy Spirit to have this strength to overcome sin. And the heart is wicked. Before you got born again, your heart was wicked. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you, if you gave every penny away. I don't care if you was the nicest person on earth. On earth. If you was not born again, you have a wicked heart. Your heart doesn't get right with God until you get born again. Genesis 6, 5, it says, And God saw the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of, the, of his heart was only evil continually. In fact, that when the Jehovah Witness, they, they said, you know, why do you think the world's so bad? And I quoted this verse to him right here. I said, because what it says in Genesis the Lord says the world is evil continually. It's not going to end. It's not going to end. And there is not going to have no great revival in the land. We can have a great revival in the, within us. Okay, within us we can have a great revival. But the land, America, right here it says it's evil continually. It's going to stay that way. The world's never going to get right with the Lord. And this is, the heart is the reason the Lord destroyed the earth the first time. Only had that one family, Noah. He's him and his family. Noah was right with the Lord. That made the re because of Noah, the rest of the family was right with the Lord. Just like I've said several times, the man, the man leads his his wife and his children to the Lord. If the man's right with the Lord, you got a very good chance the rest of the family is going to be right with the Lord. So that's why Noah and his family were the only ones who made it. The rest, everybody else was just like today. Oh. I don't need the Lord. They don't need them. They found out. And they're going to find out again. Because the Bible says, Every knee shall bow. So they will know. Jeremiah 17, verses 9 and 10. The heart is defeat, deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the ruins even to give every man according his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Again, the Lord looks at the heart and what it's done. And he gives all the people their due rewards according to their actions. That's what this verse says right here. 
Matthew 15, verse, verses 18 and 19. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed, proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thieves, false witnesses, blasphemies. The heart represents the inner person. And unless you have a pure heart, this is what you're going to produce. Like Mark 17, 15 says, it's not what goes in your body that defiles you. It's not what goes in it. But like it says here, it's what comes out of your body. What comes out, what comes out from your heart. That's what defiles you. They have the saying, garbage in, garbage out. Garbage is already there. You don't have to take it in. Your heart is wicked without the Lord. It's already there. We don't. They, there's garbage in and garbage out. Unless you're right, if you're not with the, right with the Lord, your garbage is it was there when you got born again. It didn't have to come in you. It was already there. Remember, we were we were born by two sinners. So if two sinners have a baby, a child, it's going to be a sinner. So we don't have to learn how to sin. We don't have to learn how to be wicked. It's in us to do that. So that saying, garbage in, garbage out, mm, we're already there. To have a pure heart, you can't have these evil thoughts. Thoughts, not just the acts. A lot of people think it's the acts. But as we know, what Matthew's 5, chapter 5, verse 27, 28 says, The Lord said, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, committeth adultery with her already in his heart. So the relig the religious leaders, we know, didn't have a pure heart. Because that's what they said. But the Lord, Jesus didn't come to change anything. He just came to complete, not to add, he came to complete what the verses meant. To have a pure heart, even your thoughts, if you even think about it, you've sinned. That's what it says right here. You have lust in your heart. You don't have to do the act. Just having the thought. And when you have a pure heart, believe it or not, when you have a pure heart, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised, especially us men. You'd be surprised how things don't hit us like they used to. It's just like, well, I'm going to use cursing as an example. I was in the army. I was lost. And so I cursed. I mean, I'd cuss every sentence. But then when I gave my life to the Lord, I, at first I had to concentrate on it, but then after a little while, I was like, it didn't come to me anymore. It was just didn't, wasn't there anymore. Because the more I got closer to the Lord, my eyes was on Him, and less on what I, the words I used or whatever. So as you get closer to the Lord, these sins that we did commit, and we did still commit sins, but these are like, you don't realize until later, hey, you know what? I don't do that anymore. Lust is just uh, for, and for a man, I say for a man more. I mean, kids are here, but, you know, every, everybody does it. You know, not just men, but some women do it also. Uh, I know because one time I had lunch with two secretaries in Houston. I wish I hadn't have been there. They were looking, ooh, look at that guy. I was like, God. So, so I know women act like men sometimes. But anyway, in John chapter 15, verse 3, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. That wicked heart that we have, the Lord says, Now ye are clean through the word I have spoken unto you. He's cleaning us. He's been cleaning us, and He's going to continue to clean us. The word of God had, He proclaimed, to be born again Christian, you had to be cleansed. And the Holy Spirit made you a new creature. What, is that, what do you, that new creature means? Those things we used to have, the cursing, the loss, whatever, that's, that's, you're a new creature now. That's what the Lord said. He instills in us holiness. That's what He puts in us now, is holiness. And now we're talking about, we're talking about true born again Christians. But in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 9, As Saul turned and started to leave, God gave him a new heart 
and all Samuel's signs were fulfilled that day. For those of us who know about Saul, David and Saul, God gave Saul a new heart. What did Saul do with that new heart? He tossed it out. He wanted to kill David. That new heart the Lord gave Saul didn't stay with him. He was after David. He wanted to kill David. So when we get this new heart, it's, it's up to us. It's our choice if we want to keep it. It's our choice if we want to live the way the Lord has shown us. You know, that's, that's a choice we have. He, he gave us our free will. He didn't make robots out of us. We, it's our will what we want to do. Right here, Saul decided not, not to have the heart that God wanted him to have, that God gave him. Instead, he went the other way and wanted to kill David. James chapter 4, verse 8, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and, pur- and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. And it says to purify your heart. And how do we do it? With the Word of God. And he says, you double-minded. Double-minded, it means you're trying to live for the Lord and yourself. That's what double-minded means. You're trying to make Him happy, but at the same time, you're trying to make, you're, you're doing what self wants to do. So double-minded right here, uh, like the Bible says, you're trying to ride the fence. And what's the Bible? What's the Lord say when, with someone who's trying to ride the fence? He's saying he'd rather spew them out of his mouth. If you're trying to do live both lives, you're trying to live a Christian life, but then you also want to live for yourself. Matthew's chapter twenty-three, verse twenty-five and twenty-six says, "Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of your cup." and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and and excess. Thou blind Pharisees, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. So what is plainly saying here? Clean the inside. Oh, you look all Christian on the outside, you act all religious, but on the inside you're evil, and the Pharisees were evil. He's saying, hey, clean the inside. Don't worry about the outside. Clean the inside. Clean your heart first. That's the most part, most imp- that's with, with the Lord, that's the most important, most important part of us is our heart. It's not our actions. If we get our heart right, our actions are going to be right. If our, if our heart's not right, we're either going to be hypocrites or we're just not going to be right with the Lord. But it all starts with the heart. You've got to have a pure heart. Proverbs twenty three seven. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Just like these other verses. What's here? What's here? That's how you're going to be. Now we, like I said, you got hypocrites out there. You got people who act like they're Christians, but on the inside they're lost and they're wicked. Well, it comes out when they're out there, but they hide it when they get into church or get around Christians. All right, But the way you think in your heart, that's the way you're going to be. And if, if the Lord is in your heart, then you're going to walk a Christian walk. I mean, if the Lord is in your heart, you can't help but to walk a Christian walk. And if you want a pure heart, you get born again. And in Psalms 51.10, it says, Created me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And you want this pure heart? Ask the Lord. Say, Lord, you know, I don't have that pure heart. I mean, I thought it was, I thought I was a Christian because I walked out, I got baptized. But you know what? I don't have a pure heart. Well, the Lord says right here, He says, just ask Him. He says, create, the, the psalmist said, create in me a clean, a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit with him, within me. All we have to do is ask our Lord, and He'll give it to us. Those of us who are serious, all we have to do is ask our Father, and He'll give it to us. Proverbs 4.23, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Which means... Keep a close eye on my heart. 
watch over it. That's what he's saying. Because the way your heart is, that's the kind of life you're going to live. So nobody sees the heart but you and the Lord. Proverbs 20, verse 9. Who can say, I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. Who can say that? Who in here or who out there can say, Hey, I have made my own heart clean. Who can say that? That they've made their own heart clean. You can't. you got to have the Holy Spirit so the Lord can cleanse your heart. Nobody, like right here, who can say, I have made my heart clean? I can't tell you. I can't stand up here and say, hey, I made my heart clean. The Lord is the only one who can clean your heart. He's the only one. We can't do it ourselves. Well, yeah, I can be a good... No. Being a good person does not give you a pure heart. We're talking about spiritually. We're talking about with the Lord. First Samuel sixteen seven. Now, when you look at people, there's people out there that you look at and you would think, well, this is a good person. The looks on the outside, how can I say it? Uh, that's not who the person is. The looks. First Samuel sixteen seven. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his statue, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. We, a lot of times, look the outside appearance. We do. But the Lord says right here, uh, Don't look at that. Look at the heart. And he, is uh, when Samuel, when he told Samuel to go to Jesse, and that he was going to pick one of the sons, Jesse's sons to be the next king in 1 Samuel 13 14 it says but now thy kingdom shall not continue the Lord has sought him a man after his own heart and the Lord hath commanded him to be a captain over his people because thou hast not kept that which is the Lord command so that he went up to the to Jesse and he went to the oldest son and he knows oh for sure this guy must be because he was looking at the outside now, this guy looks big and rugged, you know. I'm sure this is the one. And God said, no. And he went down, down, all the way down. And who who to give it to? The youngest one. The wimp. Huh? I mean, that's why his brothers looked at him. They did. Because when they went to battle with the Philistines, what did they tell David? Get out of here. You know, this is... Men are here. You're just a kid. And what David do? David did what they couldn't do. Huh? David stood with the Lord. David got offended because this Philistine was offending his God. And that's the way I get. When people start talking about my Lord, I, it offends me. And that's what David did. David said, uh, all of Israel, the men of Israel, the army of Israel, nobody would go out there and fight the giant. It took this little David. So don't look with these eyes. Don't look with these eyes. You see a guy who looks very intelligent, acts very intelligent, does that mean he knows what he's talking about? A lot of people, and I say a lot because I've been in this for a while now, and people look at me and like, you know, how, can, how are you teaching the Word of God? Who are you? You didn't go to college. You know, you didn't go to cemeteries. You're, you, <laughs> did I say it again? Yeah, <laughs> I really, I'm really not doing that on purpose, seriously. <laughs> Seminaries. <laughs> you're not a deacon. You're, I mean, who are you? Well, I'm a little David in an army that is allowing God to use him. That's who I am. I'm nobody. I am nobody. But I am allowing God to use me to, to study. and to, what, what he's put on me is to reach lost people. I love to witness to lost people. And also, I love to teach the Word of God. I want Christians to know. I want Christians to know the power that they have. Because it really sickens me to see Christians who are being defeated every day because they don't use the power of God that's in them. It really gets to me. So this is, this is one of the reasons I, ha I like to have Bible study. So I can help my brothers and my sisters realize who they are. We don't realize who we are. We don't realize the power that we have. 
When God lives in you, who's going to beat God? And He lives in you. It's all, it's all up to us if we want to use them. And a lot of times we don't. A lot of times we don't use them. And He's right there. He's inside of you. He's not in heaven. Well, He's in heaven. But He can be in both places at the same time. That's God. And I'm, I'm going to do what the Lord allows me to do to help Christians walk strong in the Lord. Remember, the only power the devil has over you when you're born again is what you let him have. Remember that. If, if, if he does something to you, it's because you let him do it. You let him do it. Remember that. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. We have God living inside of us, and we have to learn how to use him. We do have to learn how to use them. I wish I could stand up in front of the church and preach sometimes. I really do. Because that's one of the things I would preach on, is the power of the Holy Spirit. We know we have the Holy Spirit. We know we have the Holy Spirit in us. But we don't act like it. We go to church and we think that's good. No. Going out into the world, going out into the world and being filled with the Spirit, not being afraid to talk to people about Jesus, because believe me, the devil will give you a hundred and thousand reasons why not to witness. You don't know the Bible enough. Are you too shy? Or whatever he gives. Oh, he'll give us all kind of reasons why not to witness to people. And guess what? We listen to him. The Lord doesn't give people who are not truly born again. If you're not truly born again, you're not going to have a clean, a pure heart. You're not going to have it. The Word of God. We will know if we're totally, totally accepting the teaching He has given us by the way we live. All this teaching I do, that I'm not with y'all have only did the Beatitudes, but with them and my wife, all the teachings they've heard from me, I'll know if you're listening to me. I look at them, I know. And plus I look at myself. And, you know, Am I living what I teach? Am I living what I teach? That's when you know when someone's listening. When, we, when I finish this class, the Beatitudes... We should be changed. We should be. Because, I mean, it changed me. I thought I knew the Beatitudes until the Lord revealed them to me. I mean, when I sat down and started studying and He started showing me what they meant, man, it totally changed me. Totally. I said, I say, Lord, why don't you give me a church? I want to be a preacher. I mean, I love to teach, but I want to preach also. I do. I really do. But, you know, He's got me doing this. You know, if you wanted me to be a preacher, he'd open the doors for me. But he's got me teaching. Maybe this is what he, I guess this is what he wants me to do. But all I know is I do want to reach as many people as possible. And that's why I witness a lot. I don't believe those lies from the devil. I don't believe them. He don't want people to get saved. He don't want people to get born again. He, he knows he's going down. He knows he's going down. And he wants to take as many as with him as he can. And he is. But I'm going to do everything in the, that, that I can in the power of God to save some of them. It's not my responsibility to save them, but it is my responsibility to plant the seed in them. Having a pure heart, remember. Remember this. If you're trying to have a pure heart and you're gritting your teeth, you're not allowing the Lord to do it. You're not allowing the Holy Spirit in you to do it. It's because you hadn't did the poor in spirit yet. You didn't start up here. You're trying to start here and you should have started here. You understand what I'm saying? Poor in spirit? If I go to the churches around here and teach what poor in spirit is, if I went to the churches around here and taught them what poor in spirit means, people would be offended. They would be. They would be offended. And the ones who, who see it and, and see that as truth, they would be sad. They would be sad because they know they're not walking that way. But guess what? Praise God. Praise God. If, we, if He shows us something, all we need to do is say, Lord, forgive me. That's all we need to do. First John 1.19, it says, For if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if we haven't been walking in the Spirit, if we haven't been having a pure heart, all we have to do is say, Lord, forgive me. And like I said, if we confess, what did I say comes with confession? Repentance. 
just to, just to confess it, it don't mean anything. There's got to be action with confessing, and that's repentance. You turn from whatever whatever it is. But God will forgive us, and I've been saying that through this class. Hey, if you find if you're guilty of not doing this, we'll just ask the Lord to get on your knees and ask the Lord to forgive you, because He will. Right here it says that, and He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness, from all unrighteousness. He will. Amen. Amen. So when we go to when we go before the Lord on Judgment Day. It won't be for salvation. For Christians, it won't be for salvation. When we go before the Lord on Judgment Day, it's going to be for rewards. What rewards we get. Because we've already been judged. Our Judgment Day was when we got born again. It's not going to be at the great white throne judgment. Because we've already gotten born again. We're judged to be right with God. But what He is going to do, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12-15, through 15, now, if any man build upon this, talking about Jesus, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it. Now, he's talking about the day of judgment. That our works are going to be shown. Because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work, what sort it is. <clears throat> Meaning, whether, whether your works was in the flesh or if it was in the spirit. Okay? Verse 14. If any man's work abide, means make it, which he hath built there, thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So if you're, if you're, what you did, your works, if they make it through the fire, then you're going to get a reward for that. If it don't make it, if the fire burns it up, that means you've done whatever it was in the flesh. You did it for other motives besides what God said to do it. You understand what I'm saying? In verse 15, no, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. Like I said, because it was done in the flesh. But he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. Now this person will get saved. This is a Christian who, I've used this illustration before, I'm going to use it again. Football team. You got players who are out there playing, and you got players who are sitting on the bench. Now they're still on the team, but at the end of the year, when you get the letters and you get the trophies, who's going to get them? The players. They get recognition, it's the players. So you got Christians who are out there on the battleground, which the world is the battleground. Okay? We're out there, we're fighting against the devil. But then you have Christians who get born again, they do get born again, but that's as far it goes. They just get born again. Lazy Christians, is what I call them. They make it to heaven just like here, he says, but he himself shall be saved. He'll make it, but barely. So when I when the day of judgment comes, it's just a bonus for me. I'll just be happy to make it to heaven. But these rewards, we don't know what rewards are until we get to heaven. Like I said last week, Many times in the Word it says doers of the Word. Those who are doers of the Word, you can expect some rewards. You can expect some rewards. You know, when I was in school, now I wish, oh man, I wish I would have got better grades because I'd have a better job. You know, because I look back now and God, I should have done this. Well, I don't want to get to heaven, which I would like to say I won't know, but I wouldn't want to get to heaven if we did know possibility if it was true I don't want to get to heaven and think man I could have I wish I would have done that but I'm not going to do that uh, my life my life my own personal life all I know is when I made Jesus Lord of my life Lord means Lord I've made him I'm no longer Lord of my own life and what he shows me in this Bible that's what I want to do that's the way I want to live Mainly, number one reason, because it pleases Him. And that's what my life is to please God. That's my life. That's the number one goal in my life is to please the Lord. Then my family. But number one is the Lord. Because of what I said last week. He suffered tremendously. Tremendously, He suffered for us. 
And he made it very personal when he said, if there was only one lost sheep out there, I would have done the same thing. I gave my life to the Lord because of what he, how he suffered. This man, so, most, I think most men would die. It would kill them. It said that, he, he, that he, he sweat blood. He was in so much agony, he sweated blood. Well, that, that does happen. You can sweat blood, but it's fatal. Jesus sweated blood and lived through it. Jesus walked through 70, 70 Roman soldiers, and they all hit him in the face. And this is all biblical. They all hit him in the face. And the Bible says he didn't even look like a man. They didn't even look like a man. They tore the flesh off his back. Because the whip they had had 39 lashes. And on the, each one of those lashes, they had sharp objects. And when they would whip him, it wasn't the whip. It was when the whip would go around him, they would pull it back. And when they pulled it back, it would tear his flesh off. That's what the Bible says. That the, that the flesh was torn off his back. That is why I live for the Lord. Going to heaven... That's good. That's a bonus for me. But I live for the Lord because the suffering He went through just for me. That's why I live for the Lord. The main thing, what I'm teaching is walk with the Lord. If you walk with the Lord here, if you walk the Beatitudes, the rewards are going to just come. It's just like when you're walking with the Lord now, the promises that are in the Bible, the promises, they're promises. They're commandments but it's promises. If you're living for the Lord, walking with the Lord, those commandments are more prom They be just become promises to us. We don't look at them as commandments anymore. They become promises to us. This is the way you're going to act when you got your eyes on me. He's telling us right here, okay, be merciful and all this. He's telling us. But when you have your eyes on the Lord, and this is the way you put your eyes on the Lord is this, these things just all this it happens.